going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today we've got a new video and we're going to be mastering a track using only Waves plugins. So this is by request. Many of you out there using Waves plugins exclusively and you want to know what are some good options and what are some good approaches for mastering a track. So this track we're going to look at today is an R&B pop track. It's by James Garlima and it's called Free. So I'm going to go ahead and play back a little bit of this. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do in terms of the mastering and the plugins we're going to be using. All right, so that gives you a good idea of what we're dealing with there. This is my mix, just straight out of the mix session. And you'll see that uh, we do have some headroom. I like to have a little bit of headroom to work with in terms of our master, of course. This way, we're not going to be clipping the bus. You, you see, I don't have any kind of clipping happening um, in the mix itself. So for those of you who are doing your mixes and masters, give yourself a little bit of headroom to work with. You don't have to have a ton of headroom. You know, I hear people out here going, you need like 6 dB, 12 dB below zero, but um, you know, I don't think it needs to be that drastic, but you do want to have some to work with. In the mastering, the first thing is you've got to have a reference point in terms of your levels. It's also good to have some things that are going to show you uh, phasing issues potentially and uh, get an idea of where you're at in terms of RMS, your frequencies, all that good stuff. So I'm going to pull up the PAS analyzer here, if I can find it. I have a lot of Waves plugins, as you can see. Uh, so we're going to go to the PAS analyzer there. And up here, we're going to have our uh, frequency spectrum. And then we've got a representation of phase. And then we've got our levels over here. I'm going to switch the detection to RMS. And we'll turn the response uh, down a little bit slower here. So the next plugin we're going to put on here, and this is something that we're just going to kind of park for a minute. We're going to come back to it, but I'm going to put the IM pusher on here. And this is a great brick wall limiter mastering plugin. Again, going to be the, the last thing in the chain right before the analyzer. And right now, all we're really doing is we just want to make sure that we are keeping things below zero and we're letting this act as a brick wall, meaning we're not going to go above we're not going to distort. And so I'm just going to leave that there. I may do the push control, which this is just kind of like a threshold on a limiter. I'm going to maybe give it a DB there. And then we're going to come back to this plugin. But if we play it now. Come through. Yeah, baby, can you run through? Yeah. Body on stupid. I've been looking for the words. How stupid. So you can see the gain reduction as I bring that push up. And we'll adjust that level once we have our other additive plugins, meaning when we, when we do an EQ, when we boost some of the high end, maybe we use another plugin to boost the low end. We want to go ahead and do that first and kind of see where we end up before we start uh, reaching for this push control and uh, you know getting our levels to a louder place. So let's go ahead and let's throw on a uh, an EQ that's going to help us accentuate this beastly low end that uh, James has got in this beat, very, very heavy. And what I'm gonna do for this task is one of my favorites, and it is the uh, Puig Tech, the uh, EQ P1A. This is a model of the Poltec. As many of you probably know, the Poltec style EQs are excellent for uh, dialing in low end and giving 808s and low kick drums a little bit more boom and thunder. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring the low frequency control down to 30 Hertz setting it this low on this plugin just has a, a nice rumble to it so we're going to boost this just maybe two or three db maybe less let's see Come through. Yeah, baby, can you through? Yeah. one thing i want to point out with this plugin if i turn the boost off and everything's just zeroed out this plugin gives things a nice saturation without touching anything so this is without Come through. Yeah, baby, can you so you can hear as soon as I turn it on, it gave us just a little something, a little vintage flavor. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's do about 2 dB, 2.5 dB at that 30 
Hertz range. Come through, yeah, baby, give you and do, yeah. Body on stupid, got me looking for the words, how stupid. Coming your way, baby, I'm coming your way. Nice. So now let's do some additive EQ here. Let's go ahead and uh, directly after that, let's go and maybe try the VEQ. I like the uh, the VEQ4 for uh, doing a very high kind of sizzle sort of boost. So this is just adding some air. We've got this 15K here on our high frequency con control. So I'm gonna crank that all the way to 15. And uh, let's just, let's kind of play with it and see what we can do just to brighten the overall mix a little bit. Come through, yeah, baby, can you run through? Yeah. on stupid, I mean looking for the way. So you can hear as I went uh, a little bit too heavy with it, got a bit too bright. So I just brought it back and um, let's just hear that with and without. Come through, yeah, baby, can you run through, yeah. Body on stupid, got me looking for the word. Brings out the hi-hats, gives a nice presence to the vocal. So now one thing I'm gonna do before we get to the I Am Pusher is I wanna go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of parallel processing and we're gonna use the SSL bus comp great compressor for this purpose and uh, so what we're going to do is we go over to the mix channel we're going to go to bus one and we'll just call this ssl comp we're going to do a mono parallel comp of this so we need to go up to our input here we are sending a stereo bus here but we're going to switch this to a uh, mono signal so that we're processing this in mono and i'll show you why and uh, we can hear why in just a second but let's go ahead and go to the mono version of the plugin. And what we're gonna be doing here is, I'm gonna solo it, I'm gonna send this 100% or at zero down here, and we're gonna be uh, smacking this thing pretty strong. So it's gonna be a very, very compressed signal. All right, so it's just squashed, and uh, it has a very warm tone by pushing that uh, analog button and just the tone of the G Master Bus Comp. It just has a very analog, you know, vintage vibe to it, and that's what we're trying to get. And we're going to get a little bit of a uh, an increase with our vocal, and this is also going to help with uh, giving us a strong sound in terms of our mono compatibility. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this all the way to zero. And we're going to mix it in and this is going to be very subtle you don't want to get overboard with this because it will actually ruin your mix and your uh, your master here so this is just something that you got to be really really uh, careful and delicate about how you mix this in Free. So you can hear I've got it mixed pretty low in there, but when I turn it on, it just brings the vocal up just a tad, helps the whole uh, master sound a little bit more glued. So we'll pull that back just a touch. I want you all to hear the effect. Uh, we would probably be even more careful with it, but that sounds pretty good. So now let's go over to our uh, I Am Pusher, the, uh, the last little bit of icing on the cake. This is a great, great plugin for master processing. A lot of cool controls that are catered specifically for getting that last little bit out of your master. So first thing let's do is let's go ahead and go down to this low control. And what we can do is we can select a frequency. And in this case, I'm gonna try and select the fundamental or something close to the fundamental. Normally I'd pull up a MIDI keyboard, but for sake of time, let's just see if we can look on our analyzer. So I'm seeing a, a spike here at about 62. So let's just assume that that's gonna be the fundamental frequency. And so let's accentuate that. And let's just boost that just a touch. So 
So no explanation needed for this. It's just a little bit of magic. Let's uh, see if we can add some. So I added a little bit more high end and now I'm going to go over to our uh, imager and we're going to widen things just a bit because this is a cool mix with some elements that are dancing around. So we want to make this more exciting for our headphone listeners. So as I stress on the channel, you want to be really careful about your imaging, especially in the mastering process. You know, if you go like this, it's going to be... You can see more uh, phase being introduced here, anti-phase. So we want to bring that back, keep it in check. So I'm going to add just a little bit of low mids. I'm just hearing a little something missing and then we'll get back to that leveling. Let's go here to our VEQ4 and I'm going to go and we're going to boost it about 800. I love this 820 little uh, frequency hit here on our VEQ. Nice. So now, finally, let's jump back over to our push control or what is uh, commonly referred to as a threshold on a master limiter. We're just bringing the level up, going to make it more impactful. And uh, if you have any questions about where you should be trying to get your master le master levels, I'm going to put a video up in the corner that talks about RMS, True Peak, as well as LUFS and how you can use these to measure your loudness and get it to a point that's going to compete commercially. For now, I'm going to be looking over here at our RMS and trying to get it at about minus nine, minus eight, somewhere in there is going to be competitive. I don't want to push it too much more than that. As you can hear, we start to get a little bit of crunch if I go above that. And the more you do this, the more you're going to be able to hear when that starts to react in a not pleasant way. And you got to be really careful about how much gain you introduce here at this stage of your mastering because our uh, master limiter can start to really wreck your dynamics if you start to try and push it too much. So it's just a matter of finding the sweet spot where you're going to have a competitive level but you're not affecting your dynamics and transients in a negative way. So that sounds pretty good there. Now let's uh, go back. Now that we've done all of our mastering with our Waves plugins, I'm going to turn all these off and then I'll turn them back on so we can get an idea of all the work we did here. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you need. All we do is run. Young and we're free. Free. All right, y'all, so some folks out there are going to say, oh, it sounds just louder because it's mastered, but we're definitely accentuating some of the strong frequencies, the, the low end that we want to bring out, that 808 that's just knocking really hard now with the help of our uh, Poltec style EQ, as well as uh, this low control on the IM pusher. And then we've got some nice high end added with the VEQ4. We did a little bit of parallel uh, processing with our SSL bus compression, and then we subtly mix that in with a mono signal just to give us a bit more impact and glue to our sound. And then finally, we kept an eye on everything in terms of our levels. We're hitting it about minus nine RMS, which is gonna be competitive. And uh, we didn't overdo the brick wall limiter or the threshold, the push here on this control to the point where we started wrecking our dynamics and taking away from the impact of the transients in this beat. So I hope this helps y'all. If you have any questions about the plugins we use or mastering with other Waves plugins, feel free to leave a comment below. 
If you learned anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. And we'll talk to you soon. All we do is run, young and we're free.